Henderson, oh, it's 1 0 Blues! What a header that is! Christian Pedersen with a bullet header! It's then floated towards the back post, Jukovic in there, Jukovic! Oh, what a header! This man is on red hot form at St Andrews at the moment. And it goes again towards the towering Ziggich. Oh, confusion at Martin! And surely scores the winning goal for Birmingham City! Hello and welcome to the Blues Talk podcast back after a post-international break hiatus. And we are going on a whistle-stop tour of, well... South Yorkshire, that's all on the way. I look back on our previous three fixtures. As well as that, we are joined by Blues' very own Connell Truman here in the Blues Talk studio. It's all on the way here on Blues Talk. The Blues Talk podcast with Dale Moon and Callum Denning. Right, Dale, we're back after the international break. You've had an international break of your own, haven't you? Yeah, it's, you've got to use it in the best possible way, haven't you? A little break in the football calendar, so a little jet setting, yeah. Nice 10 days in the sun. But, uh, yeah, came back to a lovely, drizzly Huddersfield town. So, um, yeah, feel refreshed. Batteries recharged, ready to go into this Christmas period where the games come every other day. Anywhere now. You've been to the uh, international football home of Martin O'Connor, haven't you? The Cayman Islands, yes, I have. Yeah, I think he made about two appearances, didn't he, Skip? They uh, all count. Yeah, yeah, lovely part of the world. So, But yeah, as I say, flew back into the, the lovely cold weather and uh, straight to, on the Friday actually, straight to Huddersfield. So um, lots of fun, mate. But like I say, loads of games to look forward to now. It's free game week this week. We've already done three since the international break. So I think this is where the league really stretches itself out mm-hmm. and you start to find out where you really are as a team Absolutely. in the champ. Absolutely. Reading away, of course, tomorrow as we speak. This podcast, of course, going out on a Friday. But before all that, before we look ahead to Reading and before we're joined by Conor Truman... I want to take you back to that slightly drizzly, mm. cold afternoon in Huddersfield. Um, very different, of course, to your exotic holiday, but mm. decent game, all in all, all yeah. things considered. Yeah, one of the teams that have come down, we played all three in a, in a row. We did, yeah, we? consecutively. Ca- Ca- Cardiff, Fulham, international break, but then straight to Huddersfield away. Uh, still got players of high quality, and um, I think, actually, in the balance of it, we were happy to come away with a draw on the day. Mm. Um they made it, added a number of chances. We made an early save. It was Connell Truman made a fantastic save yeah. um, from a cross from deep, point blank range. He just sort of made sure he got something behind it. And that sort of set the tone for the game, really. And Huddersfield were the aggressors. We've done well and had our moments as well on the break. And um, yeah, fall behind to a fantastic through ball. It was, and it did remind me of Casey Palmer's, um, the Bristol City one at St. Yes, Andrews, yeah, yeah. where he played it between the fullback and centre half. Um, I think it was Shalabar who played it. It was uh, a lovely defence splitting pass. And it's one of those where, you know, you look at it and from a defensive point of view, every goal is preventable. But at the same time, when it's a pass of that quality, you just have, have to hold your hands up and seasoned professional in Fraser Campbell don't make any mistake and whips it in the far corner. So then you're up against it. It's away from home. They're buoyant and they're up. But, I mean, Lukas Jukovic claims that he... Uh, right, let's go into this. <laughs> let's Before we even talk about the goal, I want to debate the intricacies of it. I'm convinced it was Robbo, but of course, Juki himself, and then the dubious goals panel. Mm. What was the opinion it came off the big man? Awarded the the goal to Lukas Jukovic. Yeah, obviously an in-swinging corner. Mark Roberts has got the touch that sends the ball goalwards. I think it's going in anyway. Lukas Jukovic, to to his defence, immediately jumps up. A point gestures to his shoulder. I can see it on the Blues TV screen. Runs now off in my with mind. a celebration. Yeah, runs off. Claims that it's definitely come off him. Hands aloft. Um, I suppose when you're a striker, you'll claim any goal. Absolutely. doesn't matter how it goes in or how much of a touch it was. But the important bit was that it got Blues back level. And then you start to think, hang on, 12 minutes to go. The momentum's with us. Have we got enough? But I think a point was a fair result on the day. Mm. Another tough place to go to. We haven't lost the game. And at that stage, we hadn't drawn too many. I think it was only one. That was our the, second yeah. draw of the season. Yeah, yeah so we, we go there, make sure we don't get beat. A tough place to go and you bring a point back home, which is a positive result. Absolutely. A bit of a weird atmosphere as well, of course, when that Juki goal did go in. You start start to think, rather, that with the fans almost being on Huddersfield's back, of course, newly relegated team, rocky start to the season, the Cowley brothers come in, Looks like they're, you know, building back to where they want to be. Mm. But a little bit of that kind of bubbling undertone came back. Yeah, I think when you're when you're the away team, the first port of call is to dampen the crowd down. And they've done that for large parts. Mm. Kind, of, kind of, as I say, makes that big save. But at nil-nil at half-time, you're, you're, at, you're fine as an away team. And then the problem is they get their tails up with the goal. But then, as you mentioned, Blues get the equaliser and you're in the latter stages and you start thinking... 
you know, maybe we could be the aggressors in, in, in the ascendancy in the dying stages. But in truth, I think you have to look over it. The 90 minutes, uh, we, we'd be quietly happy, I think, Pep to come away with a point mm -hmm. given uh, the quality that Huddersfield showed on the day. Well, we stayed in Yorkshire for a little midweek game against Sheffield Wednesday, coincidentally on a Wednesday. Mm. We can sit and make jokes about that yeah, uh, we all won't. we want. But um, yeah, nice, quiet game. <laughs> yeah, um, nothing, nothing to report. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> Nothing happened, did no it? No pre-match amble to report. No, it was uh, one of the most chaotic 24 hours that I've been involved in in the uh, yeah, <laughs> football media world. But yeah, it's a way of putting it. Uh, yeah, the game itself. I mean, Sheffield Wednesday, big expectations. They've got a lot of off-the-field stuff problems that we know ourselves have mm -hmm. had to deal with in recent years. So lots of distractions going into the game in terms of noise mm -hmm. off the pitch. Um, but, I mean, you look at their squad, full of quality. They've got some good players in there as well. Harris, Bannon's been a good player for a number of years. Fletcher's a seasoned yeah. professional. Um, Reach has always done well, but actually had one of his poorer games on the day. Um, and, yeah, I thought we went there and, and done all right. I mean, again, they're the home side, so they came roaring out and tried to force the issue with us and set a high tempo. I think for us, it was a case of trying to press Sheffield Wednesday. We didn't believe that they had the quality to play through our press, like a Fulham have, yeah, like yeah. a Huddersfield potentially does. So we tried to press them high up the pitch and force the issue a little bit and cause them one or two problems, and I think we did. And uh, yeah, Alvaro Jimenez with the goal three minutes into the second half. Again, you go in at nil-nil away from home, you're quite happy as the away side, and then we get our noses in front, and I think it's a fantastic goal. Um, Poacher's instinct. Yeah, like getting, getting Crowley involved, just out on that right-hand side, finds Jeremy Bayer, he controls it, almost fires it across that six-yard box. And the most impressive thing about the goal, one Alvaro Jimenez darts across his defender, as all good strikers are told mm -hmm. to, that burst in five yards to get across your marker means that you know, you, you've then got you and yourself a great position to make first contact on the ball. But he's ahead of the near post when he makes contact with the football. And I think it's so difficult to then angle it yeah. back from where you come from um, and find that corner. It's a lovely deft touch from him. Um, typical Spaniard with that lovely intricate touch. You, you associate that with like the more technically gifted players. And yeah, I mean, it was, well, we get, we're, we're on the verge here. We could go and pick up a big three points. Um, as it was, I felt that the 10 minutes leading to, to the equaliser, they were putting a little bit of pressure on. Our legs had gone a little bit. Jude Absolutely, had covered yeah, a hell yeah. of a lot of ground. And, and talking of Jude. The um, goal. Well, yeah, I, I thought Jude is fantastic from the outset. He makes a, a, fan, a massive challenge uh, in the first half that leads to a chance. He has another chance where he slices it left mm -hmm. foot. He just leans back a little bit. But his influence is growing on this side. As a, and it's scary. I mean, we keep having to mention it. We have to. He's a 16-year-old boy. Yeah, yeah. It's But mad. he's gone from making sure his passes are nice and safe. He doesn't lose the ball. He belongs and deserves his place in a central midfield area to actually realising that he's got the ability and the confidence now to drag this team forward and to try and make things happen. Well, I think against Sheffield, it was very much a box-to-box -box midfielder's performance, wasn't it? I think there's the big tackle that you mentioned, there's two or three blocks as well in that first half. Mm. And then he's there, he's the spark, trying to make something happen at the other end. And yeah, as I mentioned, the goal, heavily involved in the build-up, gives the ball to Dan Crowley, who then obviously provides to Jeremy Bayer. Yeah, but yeah he's, a, he's a player that I do think that will be his position long-term. Mm -hmm. I think at the minute he's sitting alongside Ivan Sunjic with more of a license to get yeah. forward than Ivan hit has, but he can do it, uh, uh, do everything. He can tackle, kick, he can he can pass, he can shoot from range. He's not af afraid of doing his defensive work. So he's a he's a number eight. He's a, he can get up and down. And I think in the last couple of performances, we're starting to see the growth and progression of Jude Bellingham as a first team player. Yep. Shouldn't surprise anyone. Uh, he's, he's like a sponge and he's so uh, he's receptive to any of the advice that, that guards has given him, that Pep will give him. Um, but I do think that it might just be my personal point of view. The past couple of games, we've saw Jude kick on another level. Um, unfortunately, as we say, back to the game, we concede with 10 minutes to go. And I actually think Jude was just a little bit tired. Couldn't make up a lot of ground. Khadid Harris gets away. He's a quick, nippy winger anyway. Um, and we just back off a little bit, probably a, only a step or two. It's the fine margins in a game. I think we've, we've, we've backed off and receded back towards the 18-yard box. We needed to make that decision to go and close him down. And when we do, it's just a split second too late. I think it might even go through one of the legs of a Blues defender, finds the bottom corner. And then the game flips on its head. And we talk about Blues being in the ascendancy at Huddersfield with 10 minutes to go. It was the other way around. Absolutely. Uh, a couple of uh, uh, goal line clearances, but we managed to come away with a point. And given all the circus that, that followed that game, uh, I think that um, we're happy that we didn't lose it. A little bit frustrated we didn't win it. Game very much where each side had spells of dominance, wasn't it? I think first half, 
it wouldn't be unfair to say Sheffield Wednesday were the better side. So like you said, please to get in at nil-nil. For, what, 20, 25 minutes in that second half, of course, we got the goal pretty much immediately. On top of them, could have had the opportunity to get the second where Dan, Ca- uh, Dan Crowley rather can put Max, Max through. Yeah. Um, in hindsight, I know he said that yep. it's the, the uh, pass he should have made. Yeah, I actually think it's one of those where it's obvious from the stands, we can all see it, that it's, it's clear that he should play Max in. But when you're down there at 100 miles an hour and he's thinking of, of all of his decisions that he's got to make, uh, he's got a player to his left, a player to his right, or he can go alone. I think he's hoping that Max just draws the pl- the marker towards him, the the Sheffield Wednesday defender. But to the to the defender's credit, he doesn't quite overcommit himself yeah. towards Max. Keeps himself in a more neutral position to then make the block. And it's unfortunate because we're in the stand screaming. It's wide open for him to put Max in, and you know Max we've got the benefit though, haven't we, of the view? Yeah, and he might not score it, but at the same time, it's a golden chance to get that second. And then I don't think. Sheffield Wednesday come back from that. You talk about the the natives getting restless at Huddersfield, but they were worse at Sheffield Wednesday. You could hear a pin drop as well. Uh, but at one th- stage. Th- they they were almost waiting for it to go wrong at Sheffield Wednesday um, from the moment that we we grabbed the first goal. So unfortunately, we didn't add a second, but we'll take the point and move on. Absolutely. Uh, on to Millwall back at St Andrews. Um, interesting one. Yeah, and from not drawing a game, or from drawing one in however many games it was, one in twenty or whatever it might have been, we've we've drew three on the spin and. Yeah, this one was a was a bizarre one. I think for 20 minutes, again, we've zipped it and moved it really quickly. And I, I've always said that you do get a feeling of how Blues are going to play within the opening 5, 10 minutes. And I thought we were bang at it for, for 10, 15. We've created mm-hmm. good openings. We started to move the ball very quickly. You know what you're going to get with, with Millwall? And even under Gary Rowett as well, we know ourselves. Yeah. Always going to be well organised, well disciplined, physically very strong. You're going to have to compete with them. Um, on that front, I think Jake Clark sort of had another fantastic game. It was a big call from Pep. Because um, you've got your captain Harley Dean, who back is available. Yeah, yeah, who is available. I think many people expected him to go back in, but he felt Jake done enough in the previous three fixtures to warrant a place, and he didn't let anyone down again. You know, he can. He, the thing with Jake that impresses me, if you can tell, he's come for a seasoned academy where they like to play football because he can fire passes into a Crowley, a Villalba, one of the front men with real zip in it, and he knows what he's doing with confidence. He's comfortable under. Um, in possession of the ball and he's not afraid to mix it and I thought Matt Smith who's been our nemesis I think what was it seven goals in far ten games. too long mate that's how long seven goals in ten games for all of his clubs um, always seems to score against us they, I thought they shackled him well with the exception of a tremendous Connell Truman save unbelievable isn't it um, I think Darren Purse on commentary said it it, it <laughs> reminded him of Gordon Banks against Pella <laughs> he did Remember, he got a bit carried away but <laughs> I mean yeah you can see it as soon as the ball leaves uh, Wallace's foot on the left hand side uh, it's got goal written all yeah. over it. He rises Matt above Smith Jake. Matt Smith as well. A uh, powerful header down towards Conor Truman's right-hand side. The one thing I'd say, and I'm taking nothing away from the save, it's not quite in the corner. So it does give Conor the opportunity to get down quickly and palm it away. But yeah, fantastic save from Conor. And again, all these things just add to his confidence. You know, three games yeah, in yeah. now. It's his first home appearance in a long time. Since over Norwich. Over 15 months, yeah. yeah so uh, that did him the world of good. He makes um, another good save. Is it in the second half as well? Where mm-hmm. I think he rolls through. Uh, it's a little dummy that rolls through Mark Roberts' his legs and he's through. Uh, Kieran Lee tries to fire it in at the near post, but he races out, makes yeah. himself nice and big and makes the block. And it just, again, we talk about the confidence growing in Jude Bellingham. Connell's a good few years older, but when you've been out of the first team set up for so long, he'd have had those pre-match nerves again. Mm-hmm. Um, but all settled him down really well, and it's a fantastic save. They end up taking the lead. They do, against massively against the runner play. Yeah, it w- it's a couple of little errors uh, that are made. I think Ped's... Uh, slips or Head put slips. the dives in a yeah, little bit. Yeah, on the attack. Yeah, just just commits himself, and they work it to an opening. And you know, from where we are in the Blues TV studio, they had an extra man over, and it, it looked like it, it spelled danger. Um, I mean, take nothing away from Sean Williams. He's, he's put it out of his feet and absolutely right. What a strike! One. I mean, he's got a bit of out to in swaz on it. He's put it right in the top bin. Uh, Connell Truman had no chance, and with half an hour to go, you're thinking, well. You know, from being in the dominant force for 20, 25 minutes of that first half, we're behind here. But credit to him, they kept plugging away. Uh, talk about the importance of set pieces and the impressive performances of Jake Clark Salter when they come together well, for the equaliser. Well, a moment before, Jake Clark Salter's down with what looks like a head injury, and you think, mm. are we down to 10 men here and properly backs against the wall for the last 10 minutes? Yeah. And then, yeah, as you said, he's been that impressive in the performances that he's put in since um, deputising Farley Dean. You 
almost over the moon to see him score. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I was when it, when you saw, and it was like a quick corner, but they didn't set themselves. So when no. Harley and, uh, and Jake tried trotting forwards, Dan, Dan Crowley just put it in, and I think it may have taken Millwall and, and ourselves by surprise a little bit. But yeah, Jake lets, gets a firm head on it. It's down, it's difficult. Uh, for Balyovsky to save and uh, finds the bottom corner and then it's again 10 minutes to go it's almost it seems to be grandstand finishes these past few weeks but have we got enough to go and find the winner we couldn't in the end it was a little end to end Millwall felt they could win the game um, but it's a third straight draw um, which again frustrates one or two you want to win your home games mm -hmm. I think particularly because we've gone away from home to two difficult places in Huddersfield and Sheffield Wednesday positive results in taking something from the game Absolutely. everyone looked to Millwall to go right this is the one where we go and win it but if you can't win it don't lose it so another point to take into the weekend well, Millwall under Gary Rowett of course they're no mugs they've put in some great performances only lost one I think yeah, haven't they correct. one in six now so, yeah, a bit of a bounce under, under Rowett. And, you know, like we say, Millwall are always difficult to play against. I don't think we'd scored against them in the three games at St Andrews previous. No, I think you're right. And they beat us to a, to a scoreline of nil. So, you know, at least we managed to, to grab a goal against them and a, and a point as well. So, yeah, th I don't feel like a, a win is too far away. The finer details are, are the difference. Um, and hopefully that comes this weekend. Well, on to another three-game week, of course. Reading tomorrow, QPR in the week. And the small matter of West Brom at home coming up next weekend. But before all that, I think it's fair that we're joined by our guest this week, a man who, as you mentioned, fantastic save against Millwall, solid against Huddersfield and Sheffield Wednesday in the first team for the first time in 18 months, Conor Truman. Yeah, fantastic, uh, fantastic, isn't it, for him to be back in the squad. He's been given a chance by Pep and he's taken it with both hands and, you know, he's had three fixtures now, two on the road. He's played at St Andrews, full of confidence given the saves that he's made in those games. And, you know, it's a good battle. It's a tussle between him and Lee Camp. And Campy's a uh, vastly experienced goalkeeper. He's had a fantastic run in the side. Um, but Pep felt it was the right time to put Connell in and make a change. Mm -hmm. And it's good to have that competition for the number one jersey. Absolutely. And, and he's stuck with Connell. And it's up to Connell now to do enough in these performances between now and Christmas and the end of the season to keep hold of that, that number one shirt. So, um, yeah, good to have Connell on the, on the show. A really good talker. Uh, very articulate, um, you know, making his head a little bit bigger, but very articulate lad, very well-educated kid, very grounded as well when it comes to, to what's expected of him as a young goalkeeper. He's had to be patient for his chance, but glad to see he's in the team and he's taking it. Let's hear from the man himself, Connell Truman on the Blues Talk Podcast. The Blues Talk Podcast. Connell Truman, thank you for joining us. No, thank you for Here on me. the Blues Talk Podcast. You're a huge fan. You've told us you've listened mm. to all 15 I've episodes. Not to we one. Have I've not listened to one. 16. 16 episodes. I've not listened to one. <laughs> <laughs> I won't be listening to this you know one. But I like the refreshing honesty, though. You yeah. get some going, yeah, yeah. Robbo said nah, the same. Nah. But I haven't listened yeah, to him. Nah. 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 Honest, Thank you, mate, for the support. It's important the players <laughs> get behind what we do here at the club. One club, I'm here, I'm one club team and all that. <laughs> I'm here. Uh, how you doing, mate? All right, mate, yeah. Yeah, fresh out of the gym, aren't you? Did yeah, a little bit of summer weights in December. Oh, it was a power session being professional, but if that's where you want to go with it. <laughs> Straight into the studio. Look at that. Come yeah. in, no, no, yeah. on TV, the <laughs> No, thank you, mate. Um, yeah, as we've sort of already spoke about off camera, been a, been a, been a very uh, good three weeks for you. Um, into the side, two tough away games, important points on the road, and then back at St Andrews, which must have been a good feeling. Yeah, it was wicked to be back at St Andrews. Obviously, it's been a while since I played there um, in front of the home fans, but the reception I got was fantastic. The atmosphere was, was awesome. So, yeah, it was good to be out there. Uh, we'll start with the Millwall one because it's a huge save. And again, I know, I reiterate, this is take two of the podcast. Callum Denning has had an absolute shocker. Listen, yeah, I'll hold my hands up. I'll uh, hold my hands up. We can't continue to pretend it hasn't happened. We can't. It's nah, happened. This is, this is the wise decision. To sort we've, of we've done two hours with Connell. <laughs> Two and a half. <laughs> I've not been let out of this meeting. <laughs> it's God, boiling. It's, it's so boiling. Uh, right. The save from Matt Smith. Talk us through uh, first what your thoughts were about the save. Because as I say, it's a great, it's a very good save, but it's still Stop isn't yourself in the corner. From saying great. Not in the well. It's very good. It's, <laughs> it's very, very good. good. Yeah, well, it's not in the corner. You no, know, I, don't I can't. Think it's like, I think it's still good, man. I've watched it enough. A lot. Like, you're I ain't gonna lie. Oh, no, I'm having it. You look really proud. <laughs> Richard Wilford of BBC WM did say the fact that it wasn't in the corner actually worked against you because it's close to you. Yeah, you look we'll go with that. <laughs> <laughs> it's give you I, an out. Yeah, I'll take it, Richard. Thank you. <laughs> uh, but you did make a good point. What's going through a goalkeeper's mind when that, as soon as that ball leaves the the cross, it the, the, the cross? foot of the crosser. How, what, go. what goes through your head as a goalkeeper? Um, Obviously, initially, you're having a look, can you come and deal with the cross? Can you come and catch it, punch it, whatever? 
couldn't so then you just gotta especially when you're playing Millwall and Matt Spiff you know you, you might have a little bit of work to do so you just you know pivot off and get set and ready to you know back yourself back your reactions and stuff like that and that's just what I did yeah it's a good save down to your right hand side mm. mm-hmm. yeah right I'm not going to ask you if you've got a stronger side because you're sort of giving yeah, stuff let's away just but keep that to ourselves. Uh, I almost give you too much credit by saying you managed to push it out of oncoming traffic, but you don't even think about that when it's that close. No, I, yeah, I think it was just pure reaction. So it's just about saving the initial shot and then you know where the ball goes, you try and deal with it again. And like, luckily it went to Harley and we could clear our lines, but it was just it was just about saving the shot. Do you want to get up and celebrate when you make a save like that? Um, you know, you know, goalkeepers are sometimes so cool. Yeah, just yeah. Like, What's the next thing? Where's the next ball coming from? Really, inside, you must be like, you've scored a goal. One to run off to the uh, corner. Like. Nah, a little bit, but like, when you score, the game stops, doesn't it? So you can give it beans, you can do what you want. Yeah. Like, when we make a save, you've either got a corner to deal with or somebody's going to try yeah, and true. T- true. smash in the rebound. So the, the only time you really get is after the game to have a little go, oh, that was decent. Though. Yeah. And you know yourself when you've had a good game as well. I mean, mm. I know sometimes like, players like validation and stuff, but you're experienced enough to know that. You walk off that pitch, you know you've had a good one. Especially in the last three games where you've got to be pleased with all of your performances. Uh, yeah, I think so. I think considering how long it's been since I played in that sort of in the first team and even a game in general to, to come in. And I think I've done all right, to be fair. I'm looking back, I'm, obviously it's not perfect and there's loads of room for improvement, but... As a starting point, I think it. I think it's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Take us back to the Huddersfield one, and I know we're doing it a bit mixed up. But when was you told that you was going to be in? Because I know you said to the press after that Campy had some nice things to say to you as well, which mm. it's got to be difficult for him to have been, you know, pulled out of the team and then yeah. you were given the jersey. Yeah. So obviously, I found out Friday night in the hotel, um, and then that. So Gaffer just, just pull you and say one on one, like, listen. Yeah. You're yeah. In. yeah. Yeah. That's all it was. You're gonna, you, you're starting tomorrow, and that, that was it really. And then. Yeah, like like you said, Campy was was really good. To be fair, he had nothing but positive and, and encouraging things to say to me before the game, which was you know really appreciated that. And uh, like you say, it could have been a difficult one for him, but he's, he's obviously you guys know him. He's a, he's a good guy and he's a top pro, and he would never sort of mm. display anything other than like exemplary attitude. Oh, good words. word. Yeah, I know. Good word. Nailed it. Um, but I think that's probably a sign of how close you are as a goalkeeping unit. Whenever and no, no, like they give us. Union crap yeah. for not going and filming you enough and doing bits and whenever we do go and do it then we end up getting those with the, more yeah, with the crap for doing it yeah. so we can't really win in that instance but anyway when we do go it's no, a good it's environment not, it's, not. it's it because is. then when we do shooting or something and we save however many shots and then you dinks on over your head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so how good was I in that session? Like, if I'm being serious, well, yeah. Yeah. I don't watch the old session. We just look for little look for the golden nuggets. That's what right I mean. Now. Look for the goals. So we're making saves. You look at it and I'm thinking, that's could be a some lie. Good, that is could be some good ones on here. That's no, a lie. Goal, goal, goal. That's a lie. That is. Whenever I edit a training session, I promise you, I always try and balance it out with some good saves. I think. I think you're if, if that's true, you just don't make I think you're. I think you're the only one. Ah, oh, behave yourself. Nah, I promise you, that's that's how we work. So you got a massive save might go top of the queue, you know, as well. Everyone loves a save. Like, people don't think no, they do love a save. Loves a save. Yeah, yeah, they do love a save. Save in slow mo. I mean, so nah, nah, not slow mo. Sometimes because like, it, it looks it, better yeah, when it's wow, yeah, it that's true. Better, like, yeah, just some bit of tips for you. So <laughs> New head of blue TV. You know I mean? oh, wasted, wasted. Uh, so you're in at Huddersfield. Best we'll have to do but you're welcome. You you're in at Huddersfield. Um, yeah, 15 months without first team action. Been a long time coming. Do you have, I know you, it's not a debut, but it felt to me like it was like a second coming of Conal Truman because you're, you're back yeah. in again having me so long out. So do you have any nerves or is it literally your game heads on? Like, you're not, you're not 15, 16, 17, so you've been no, around no, a group yeah, long yeah. enough, so you, you're professional enough to have that. But do you have any pretty much nerves ahead of that one? Yeah, I think, I, there's, I think there's always, to a certain extent, there's some, some nerves, some nervous energy. Um, but it is mainly masked by focus and yeah. the job in hand. Um, yeah, especially when you get out there and you get to the stadium and you're doing your warming up, you're just concentrating on what you're doing at that time. And then pretty pretty quickly once the match starts and you've you've had a couple of early touches, you know, you, you settle in and you're just business as usual. Yeah, you make a big save in that one from Fraser Campbell. No, it wasn't. It was a header from point blank range, cross from deep. Do you remember it? Yeah, yeah. Was it from Fraser Campbell? Yeah. But it saves like that when you first game after 15 months immediately got to boost your confidence. Uh, yeah, I think so. It was, 
You don't yeah. think it was an average. You know, no, I, I thought it was. I thought it was all right. Yeah. I think that if that goes in, I'd be disappointed. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you know what I mean. But like I say, it is nice to sort of make the saves and you know feel like you belong at that level again. And yeah, it was just a little starting point, really. How much do you look back on your performances after games as a goalkeeper? Do you sit with Flavs? Sit, sit with Flavs, with... yeah. So obviously it depends on when you play and, and when you got days off or whatever. But the next day that we're in, we'll I'll sit down with Flavs and he'll have, you know. I don't know, 10 minutes of clips, okay. you know, that's specific to you and some good stuff, some stuff that needs to be improved on and, and you'll talk through it and, you know, thought processes and what you were thinking at the time and what you could see at the time and, and just stuff like that and help, helps you improve for the next game. Yeah, is it tough? I, I imagine, I mean, we don't know, but is it only till we watch it back afterwards on tape do you actually see things a little bit clearer? The reason why I ask it, Dan Crowley came last week and said... I should have passed that ball to Maxim Collin to make it 2-0. At mm. the time, it's 100 miles an hour. He's got players running everywhere. Yeah. You know, his own teammates, defenders running at him. And it's only till he watched it back do you actually realise how glaringly obvious it was. Do you find that with yeah. the goalkeeper? Yeah, I, goalkeeper? I think so. I think it's the same for everyone. Like when you're out there and it is 100 miles an hour and you're viewing it from, you know, from where I'm standing on the pitch and then you look at it again from the camera and obviously that's a different angle and maybe... When you've got the ball and you can see the fullbacks are in more space than you thought, so you, should, mm. you could have clicked it out there, or just different things. It's always it give, just gives you a different angle. Like obviously, it's like a million times slower as well. You can stop it, you can pause it, and freeze frame everything, and so it does give you that bit more clarity and a different perspective on things, definitely. Yeah. So decent one will draw in the end. I think we'd have took it. I think afterwards, I mean, the way we summed it up was he, you know, Pep always wants to win the game. He always mm. talks to the press and says whether home or away we're going to pick up three points yeah. but at the same time you probably come away from that one thinking that's, that's a decent point on the road actually mm -hmm. against Huddersfield team who's still got a lot of quality nearly and relegated three game week on to Sheffield Wednesday all the noise that surrounds it we've already spoke at length about the whole run up to the game yeah. as a group of players actually interesting do you ignore all of that do you just literally concentrate on that 90 minutes or do you almost What's take Sh all the, yeah, all the yeah. stuff ahead of the game all the social media talk all that do you just yeah, block I it all think, out yeah I think obviously you see it, it's impossible to, yeah. to not see it but it don't it, don't, it doesn't affect it you, like you're thinking or your preparation or anything like that and it never really affects in terms of like your warm up or anything or the game mm -hmm. that. you just like I said before it's business as usual you've got, you got a job to do and you go out there and be as professional as you can and, and do your job yeah, a bit of a crazy game because again we take the lead in the second half. See, nil nil at half time. Take the lead, they pull one back. You look back at that one, right in the corner when it could deem Harris. There's not much you can do. How do you analyse it? From yeah. your point no, of view? I think obviously we watched it back. I think my position is pretty good. He's hit it fairly well. It's it, the, the tough thing is is when it goes through the defender's legs and it always, you know, makes it a little bit more difficult for you. I've, I've, yeah, there's n I don't look look at back at it and go. Bloody Arcan, you should have you should have done this, should have done that, you should have yeah. saved it. But obviously we'll always keep looking at it and seeing if there is anything we could have done differently. Yeah. And then it's a crazy last ten minutes where we're defending for our life. I mean you have to almost flick one up in the air with your right arm that fires. Yeah, that it. just that just hit me, to be honest. <laughs> There's nothing more to say about the that. That one's just a good hit one. Me. The yeah, the new one. That, no post. He hit that well, yeah. by the way. <laughs> because I remember, I spoke to you the day after, I thought it hit your body, but it's actually no, your I hand. I hit my hand. I know. It's a good save. Yeah, it, it felt good at the time, to be honest. It felt like it could be a big one, an yeah. important one. And yeah. it turned out to be so when we got the point. But yeah, it was a mad 10 minutes when it was yeah. just, you know, everything's on you. The corners are just swinging in left, right, and sending um, Robbo's head in everything. We're clearing off the line. It it was a mad last it 10 minutes. It Connell, because I said in commentary, I think I said, Sheffield Wednesday, a big physical team. And they'll look at Connell, yeah, who's yeah. not six like three, six four. He's not going to come and dominate. A, the next day in the <laughs> training ground. <laughs> He comes up to me, he goes, not the, not the biggest keeper, am I? Yeah, not, <laughs> him, not the big, I mean, I understand. How tall are you, Con? How tall are you, Con? Are I you feel six or are you six? Oh, that's a right. That's <laughs> are you six one? Just about. No. Nah, when your hair's sticking up. Touching six two, and we'll go down to the gym and do it now. Because <laughs> no one believes what it. What has you got on? Every, bare feet, that, mate. Right. I'll do it now. Right, get the you. sports science stats. I'll give you that. I'm just everyone saying. Everyone me for it. See, that's why. So it's a sensitive issue for you, it not is, me. Do you know is, what I mean? Yes. It's a valid point. It's a little bit of man syndrome, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Like, but yeah. everyone, yeah. But no. the one thing that I said so much yeah. nice. Yeah. I, I said so yeah. many nice things. You don't things. need to mention it, then. You know, I was like, it's great that it's he's that's got his chance. He's made great saves in the game. 
Oh, what that, big save that you've though, you, you've just thought, oh, I've paid him a couple of compliments here, let's just Throw bring something him back else in the there. That's actually <laughs> justified why Sheffield Wednesday are bombarding the box. Because it's 10 minutes to go. So they get a one at home. So they're whipping corners in. They say a big weak point in this team is their goalkeeper. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Con, we kept, listen, all's well that ends well. Yeah. You made a good couple of saves. Thanks, mate. You've, you've grown in Weren't confidence. Not dominated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, back at St Andrews. I mean, yeah. usually it's in a half-empty stadium for 23. Now you're back in front of a crowd. How different is that experience, first yeah. team? I suppose it's like chalk and cheese. Yeah. Oh, good. It's all right. Cliche there. Uh, yeah, it was. No, it was good. Really enjoyed it. Like I said, like when you're playing 23 games, there's no one there, and it's just it can be feel a little bit dead sometimes. But there's no chance of that in a first team game. And you get there, and you know the fans are just like, doing what they always do, and they're loud, and they're, they're brilliant, and the atmosphere is really good. And it was just like, yeah, yeah this is this is this is what it's about. Yeah. Tell you what, different conditions to your last league game there. Not sat there, well, stood there roasting this time, I don't know. Oh, yeah. No, was it Norwich? No, Norwich. Oh, Norwich. 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 Norwich and Middlesbrough were both boiling. I yeah. Mean. Not good for ginger people. No. Take a, take a rainy night. Ginger person. <laughs> 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 Made yeah, I bought that with you. Yeah, probably yeah, trimming yeah. the blonde lad. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah. Um, but... Again, we've already mentioned the save. They haven't got a ch- we haven't got a chant for you for Conor Truman yet. No, have we? we need to. You got one in mind. Fans need to come up with a Truman, yeah. Truman chant. I'll leave that out there. Well, listen, no, there's a request. request. You've got to know a song about yourself. You've got. There's got to be one that I think. Mm. Yeah, I love that. I've never really given much thought. To no, no. I'm well, asking you now. There's a question from Twitter. <laughs> I'm not that quick thinking. Though, question from really. Twitter. We'll bring up later. Wait, oh. we could have something lined up here. Ooh. But we'll save that. That's a little Ooh. tease. Ooh. Hook and tease. It's called in the um, business. So it brings us on to Reading, mate. Uh, back on the road again. Yeah. Um, I mean, perhaps done his press conference this week and said he don't feel like we're far away now from turning like these draws into victories. The fine margins, little bits in games that have stopped us from winning these last five. You look at Reading, wherever we go, you'll try and win a game and it's another match where you try and take the three points back to St Andrews. Yeah, obviously, like, that's what you, you said, Pep always says, like, we look at any game thinking, how can we win this? And that will be no different Saturday. Like you say, we've had chances in games where we could have gone two up and or a goal here and there, and then maybe it's a different game and, and some of these draws are turned into victories. When, and like you said, the one with Dan, when he come in yeah. and he said, I should have passed it. And maybe if he does that and Max scores, it's, it's a different game. But they are the, they are the fine, fine margins. But we're working at it every day and, you know, it's going to click and then we can feel it coming. Yeah, absolutely. What's it like for you, to, although you haven't been playing in games, you've always been on the training ground through this whole transition. I mean, we notice it because we're watching it from the stands, but do you notice a change in training and the way we're playing? Because there's a certain DNA about us now that we haven't seen. A, a generation of Birmingham City mm-hmm. fans has never seen us play this way. Do you see that from your point of view on the training ground every day whenever you having shots fired at you from point blank range? Uh, yeah, I think you can, you can see it definitely on the training ground. And definitely, you know, obviously I haven't been playing, but I've been able to watch the games, obviously from the stand or whatever, and you can, you can see it like it's just obvious. And it's some of the football that we've played this year has been, been unbelievable, to be fair. And I think that, that will translate to victories and, and, and stuff sooner or, sooner rather than later. Yeah. Um, with all of our guests, Denning, we always go back over um, their career. We do. <laughs> go back to the very start. I mean, yeah, you're very much in the infancy. Hopefully mm. it's the start of a very long, okay. prosperous, successful career. But we'll go back, to the, go back to the very start, mate. Take us to when you first started playing, whether you was outfielder, goalkeeper, and, and the whole grassroots story of Connor, um, CJ Truman. Oh, weird, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I started playing Sunday League in goal straight away. Right. Um, but we were, we were quite good as a lot as a Sunday League Who team. Who did you play for? Uh, Starland St. Anne's. Okay. So, something called field where. But we were quite good. So I used to stand in goal and didn't have a fat lot to do. So I was obviously as a kid, like an impatient kid, I was like, nah, it's not for me this. Mm. I want to go out and get involved. So I moved, had a little foray. Is that the word? Good word. Is it the word? Yeah. Foray, right. yeah. Foray, yeah. There we go then. That. Into, <laughs> into like midfield for a bit. Had to play in goal for school because we had no one else. Okay. And that's where I got picked up playing playing for school. So it was quickly like... Blue scout? Uh... It was like a North Birmingham centre of excellence. I said this okay. the other day, and I don't. And then, and then it was a trial for like forever. Yeah, felt like forever. And then, how so old yeah. did you be at this point? Eleven, I think I was when okay. I signed. Okay. So yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, you've been here. You've been a testimony. You had, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's 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 over ten. Yeah. 
I know we were talking before we went on here about the fact that you and I went to kind of similar secondary schools where I know snoring out. Where <laughs> they are, he's excluded, mate. Go on, mate. Where football, <laughs> mate. Jamelia went to my school. Oh, to be fair, <laughs> <laughs> to be <laughs> fair. <laughs> what school's that? Uh, CTC, mate. CTC Kingshurst. Yeah. Carry yeah, on. Anyway. You and I went to uh, schools where football wasn't a thing, really. Like, we did mm. games, we played rugby, we played cricket. How did that kind of impact you? Obviously, going from playing football, yeah. I'd imagine, primary school. So, like, yeah, so I played football league. at primary school, and then when we went to secondary school, it just wasn't yeah. a thing at all. It was rugby in the winter. Croquet in the summer. <laughs> cricket and athletics in, in the summer. Um, I don't know why he's trying to get <laughs> He's jealous, jealous, mate. Yeah, he's yeah, jealous. He's no, I am. I couldn't play football. I'm, I'm jealous of mine. <laughs> Carry on. Oh, mate. Go on. Go on. Such a nerve, then. I know. Um, so, yeah, it was, I think, actually, it was not a good thing, but then when I, when I could come here, obviously, have a night and play football, it was like, I was always so, like, enthusiastic and excited to be here, and it was just, you know, to be able to play football and get those however many hours a week to do that, I just, you know, took the opportunity with both hands. Who's a uh, age group where you've been, or one above and below you, uh, kind of, who, came, who might have came through? Any so of the lads? Of Dimmy, Brownie. Okay. Um... Cogs is obviously still here. Yeah. yeah. And the year below, it's obviously like Weaves, um, Wes, Don Bernard, you know, that sort good, of group. So good couple of years, yeah, really. Yeah, it was a good couple of years, really. Like, there was, when we were second year scholars and we were in Youth Cup, we thought we'd got a right sniff here. And then we went to play Everton with, I think it was out, without Brownie and Dimmy. So we lost our two best players, really. Yeah. So, and we still, I think, I think it was hot. I mean, I didn't play, but I think it was five four or four three or something. So yeah. we went like took them really close, and we didn't didn't really have Brit Brownie or Dimmy, so could have been a different different yeah. story with them too. Yeah, FA Youth Cup lads, Sunderland away. Oh, it's a lovely trip. It's a great stadium, though. They're not playing there. Thursday oh. night just to make it worse. Yeah, they're not at the stadium. Oh. Thursday oh. night. They're it, no, they're not. No, it's not at the it's stadium. It's at, it's at a ground with no changing rooms at the moment yeah, as well, isn't it? Um, yeah. I don't a non-league club. It's just. Of the surrounding areas, it's a shame. Oh, yeah. it's tough, um, Cold December night. So you get picked up as an eleven-year-old, and here you are. Is it uh, like a shock to the system? Did you enjoy being here when you was a young kid? Was it yeah, unbelievable it was to be at a professional club? Yeah, or, I, yeah. You could, especially when you're that age and you're like, at school you were known as the yeah, kid. Yeah, you know I mean? that's what I mean. You're like, you got a bit of a bit of clout there, isn't you? Like, yeah. <laughs> Everyone's enjoyed you, yeah. Like, like, uh, uh, yeah, but no, it's true. Like you, you, you do feel feel good, and it was just wicked when you were here because, like I said, sometimes when you when obviously with the schools that we went to, they weren't sort of inclined to have that many sportsmen there. So sometimes when you're playing in PA or on the playground or whatever, it was like oh, they're not great. Yeah, they're not great. And without with all due respect, like it's just you're a kid and you're you're impatient and you and then you get here and. It's a it's a good standard, you know what I mean, and yeah. you're not sort of used to it, but it's exciting, and you're like, yeah, this is this is a bit of me, this. Yeah, work your way all the way up. People have always had the comparison with Jack Butland when you've been here. Yeah, you hear that? I've heard it a couple of times, but I think that's just because he was here, like, and he was a few. The last keeper to really you know come, I mean? through come through as a yeah. academy, so. Yes, yeah, but he's like he's not small for a keeper. So he's, he's a big like lad, isn't he? And a bit like a <laughs> Proper keeper. You'd have been all right with him on the highlights. The chef went probably would have just passed it all clean, <laughs> clean sheet at Millwall. <laughs> clean sheet at Chef um, um, Yeah, I always, always heard that comparison with, I oh, like, he's the next Jack Butland and all that. But I just think you don't listen, players don't listen to it, so. No, there's, there's no point really, like, what? You're not going to gain. No, what do I gain from, from listening to people go, he's the next Jack Butland? Yeah. Mm. Like, if. You've you got know, to be you as well. Yeah. You've like, got to do everything I mean, yeah, you're yeah. good at. There's no point in trying to be Jack because yeah. you know you can only be yourself, and that's all I'm going to do, and and keep working hard, and and hopefully like kick on again. But yeah, there's no point in comparing yourself to other people. You just got to do it yourself. Yeah, couple loans in there, mate, to go and get some experience. What was that like getting to non-league and playing some of that some football there? Uh, just the whole experience, really. Just being going. To no, it was good. It was good. It was. I tell you what, it was. It was a lesson, and it was a good learning experience for me. Like, I think there's no secret. Sorry, I didn't go. As you'd fantastically well I didn't mm. go as, as I would have planned but what it did do was enable me to learn a lot in a short space of time and, and I, I did do that and I think it's standing me in good stead to be honest with you yeah what are those lessons mate just how to deal with the yeah there, were, there was there was a number of things and there's, some of the stuff there's, there's no point in getting into because yeah. it's not on field stuff it's just what, what it was at the time yeah. and, but obviously the on field stuff was it, 
it's tough. It's very like sort of some of the stuff's like quite like boring and technical and tactical and and just sort of start positions and sort of protecting yourself and you know looking after yourself in terms of like not ne not necessarily in a physical way, just in terms of making sure you're on that team sheet every week and, and just like yeah doing what you need to do to, to you know to play well and when. So you, obviously when I was there, you were training on like a Thursday night and stuff and, and not much else. So they'd do what they needed to do from their point of view. Mm. But obviously I'd, I'd have a different schedule to, to a lot of other people there. So you had to, had to learn quickly to do what you needed, what I needed to do to be right on a Saturday. And if that wasn't what everyone else was doing, then sometimes so be it. Yeah. Uh, we always have players that have been out and loaded and benefited from it. I think any experience, negative and positive, mm -hmm. is actually a positive experience yeah. because you've gone and seen the other side and it's not worked out. When for we you had Dan Crowley in it. Well, you, you look at like players that have gone out and it hasn't worked out from on loan and just take what you can from it and move mm -hmm. on to the, to yeah, the next look, one. Nothing, like, nothing ever goes perfectly according to mm -hmm. plan and it's about what you make of the, any situation that you, you find yourself in. And, if you if you try if you look back at it negatively and you think oh that was rubbish that was rubbish, then you know you're never going to learn you're never going to get better but as long as you can look on things with a positive outlook and think what did I learn here what could I have done better and, and take things you know in the right way going forward then you like yourself I think everything's a positive yeah no, absolutely you've had to be patient for your chance in the first team here but now obviously it's came around but I think for a goalkeeping perspective and we spoke about this the longevity of a goalkeeping career mm. is different anyway you're not quite working on the mm. same time scale or time frame as outfield players so were you less concerned that oh you know I'm 20, 21, 22 and I'm not ye yet getting my chance because there's still plenty of time and um, it is different for a keeper and I think potentially if I was an outfielder then my thought processes might have been a little bit different mm. but I could always sort of see the process see what was going on mm. see that I was getting better see that I was learning and it was <coughs> you know, <coughs> yeah, good. uh could so I, yeah I could have maybe been a little bit more impatient if I was an outfielder but I think obviously you know you can play for a bit longer and you have maybe mature and hit your prime a little bit later as a keeper so as much as I, I did want to play and I was desperate to play I knew it wasn't about you know throwing toys out of the pram or getting mm. you know impatient and unha unhappy and, and doing you know things in the wrong way because I knew it was the opportunity would come yeah and now it's about keeping it now yeah. that it's almost like now is the hard work starts you've got yourself in pole position now is where the work starts yeah I think I think that's obviously the, the task now is to cement that number one shirt and that's what I want to do and I believe I can do it but like you say it's, it's hard work and then nothing else that's what's going to get you there is, is hard work and you can never rest on your laurels in football there's always something driving you forward and, and right now I is cementing the number one shirt here and that, that's my goal and that's what I'm clearly going to do yeah it almost goes to show the timing's a big thing in football as well you, know, you need to talk about sorry young players getting like a a chance at clubs and you might be part of the timings right now you've come into your prime at a good time you can have a, a manager or head coach now at least believes in putting young players in and giving them a chance so the stars align sometimes for players and you do almost think we've got two senior goalkeepers in Stucky and Campy both here and invariably the club's going to start looking towards what the next the future of our goalkeeping position is so you might find yourself actually you've bided your time you've kept your head down and worked hard and now the timing just seems to be right for yeah, ho hopefully. I think, you know, when you do get your head down and, and you work hard and you, you know, you do what you're supposed to do, that you've always got to believe that you will get rewarded for that. And, and that's what I did believe and that's what I do believe. And I, hopefully, look, now is the start of, you know, getting rewarded for that. And like I say, you've, you've got a long-term goal and I've always had that long-term goal and, and that's what it's about now. Yeah, it's mad to think that you've got... Lee Camp, who's you know five hundred and fifty plus games. Oh, David Stockdale, promoted to the Premier League, been Championship Team of the mm. Year. Both mm. breathing down your neck. It's no better competition to have than those senior boys. That no. you need to make sure your performance levels are still right. Yeah, of course. You, like they don't really need any introduction, do they? Either no. of them, they've they've been there, done it all, pretty much. So I know that, that the second that I come off it, that they'll be knocking on the door to get back in. So I don't want to let that happen. So. I know I've got to keep working hard every single day and making sure my performance levels are, are stay high and yeah. get higher. And you've already, I mean, we already spoke about how campy's been with you, but does it make any difference whatsoever in those training sessions as a group? Is it the, di the dynamic being exactly the same? Whether who's oh, I think it's been, I think it's been the same really. Obviously, we all get on. I think we're a tight group as a as a group of keepers all the way through the twenty threes and, and and everything. So 
the dynamics not really changed. It's still you know intense and and hard work, but you know with with that banter and that you know that light hearted side to it as well. You notice that Scott puts on a Spanish accent when he shouts yeah, about Ramos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've never heard him do it before, ever, but yeah, he does now. You haven't really got a name that's conducive to like nah, an Nah, I want it, though. I want, a, I want something, but no, nah, it's not Truman. Truman. Yeah, I'll just stick to my <laughs> brother, Truman. Yeah, yeah. 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 Roll the R in Truman. That's yeah, the way yeah, to do yeah. it. Yeah. Um, it doesn't have like the same ring to it as Ramos, uh, so yeah, yeah, you're, right, no, you're right, mate. Ginger Coddle Truman's the <laughs> same as <sighs> Six Brown Coddle Truman. Ramos. <laughs> uh, short term goals though mate you can't really pa- look past the next game for you can you I suppose without no. putting words in your mouth it's all about next performance yeah. next game uh, no of course obviously Reading Saturday so it's about making sure that we we and I turn in a good performance and, and hopefully that clean sheet and, and that win will come with, with them um, yeah it's just about just about that at the moment really it's taking it one game at a time and then cementing myself and when then we'll look further ahead when as and when yeah that's it you're almost can't afford to look to the long term although in your back of your mind you know that you want to occupy that number one shirt for as long as you possibly can still in a very infancy it's going to be game number four if you start on Saturday so mm. it's a case of making sure your performances are, are good and then you can start to look further afield and you almost look to like the, the passing of the baton from Camp and Startdale generation Moa's young goalkeeper mm-hmm. you got Zach Zach's in you're in a bit of competition apart you're among your area as well mate yeah, well, it's always good to have a competition. Um, and obviously, there's there's good young keepers at the club, and so I think that competition will will be there for years to come. Hopefully, come on, Truman. Let's hope that you put in a good performance against Ready. We're not sat here listening back going, "Who's talking of his game?" <laughs> no, I did sort of kill you with a tweet and said, um, "Are you showing him air? No, we've got. Hey, this, hey, is, hey, this, this is coming up. This is, this is the best bit. This is a hey, you'll see. You'll see. This is a segment." Um, yeah, I nearly killed you with a tweet that was on about like how slick <laughs> the conditions were at Sheffield Wednesday. But Great conditions for a keeper, uh, was it? Yeah, delete that one. Connor, yeah, good. fan questions. Right, Callum Denny. What are we calling this? Is it quiz a keeper or what? Yeah, yeah. Is Some game show music underneath, yeah? Yeah, quiz right. a keeper. First one. This ties into not having a song that I was saying earlier because I think the aim is to, I think, sing this for you at Blackburn. So uh, what's your favourite Christmas song? Nice and easy to start us off with. My favourite Christmas song? Um... A few common shouts here, aren't there? So Is there, yeah? Like Fairy Tale in New York. Yeah, go with that one. You go with that? Yeah, I know that Is one. Is that a cop out there? Mm. It's agreeing yeah, with it what I've All right, fair. Roll out the barrels is my favourite one. I don't know. It's a good one. one. Good one. Roll, roll out the barrels. <laughs> Next question. Tone deaf, yeah. <laughs> 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 this is from um, Lee W1875. Brown sauce or ketchup on a bacon sandwich? Ketchup. The correct answer is neither, but it's fine. What? It's fine. No, nah, nothing. Dry. What about butter? Uh, Butter's n- fine, but nah, without sauce. Been. Nah. nah, ketchup every day. Are you the juice or are you the sauce? What do you mean? It's a good debate to have whether you're the <laughs> juice or the sauce. Like the, the the juice don't last long, but the sauce is always there. It's just a good debate to have. We'll talk about it another time. Yeah, that's so what are you on? James Brownell, what are your favourite gloves to wear each match day? Uh, I'm wearing all sport, so I've got some bright yellow and blue rascal numbers at the moment. I'm getting a bit more serious here. We touched Ooh. on this as well. This is from Dan Hanley. He said, how did it feel getting called back up to the first team? Was there any pressure on your shoulders? Um, there's always a certain level of pressure. You're playing for Birmingham City and that comes that holds its own sort of weight. But it was just exciting, to be honest with you. I just felt you know lucky to be out there and to be given that opportunity. And I was just excited to get going, really. At Jimmy Ruthless, and to be fair, this is a bit of a ruthless question. Uh, he says, I once offered you so fifty partridge, no, that was, wasn't it? Very partridge. <laughs> He's my hero. I've got to do something based on him. Uh, he says, Dan! Aha! <laughs> that was very good as well, by the way. I'm the same person. Uh, he says, I once offered you 50 quid for your gloves on the cop car park and got a very polite no. How much are they worth now? How pleased are you that you were polite at that moment? <laughs> Always polite, what are you oh, trying to say? Away. That's, okay, <laughs> um, so. I don't know. If, well, if I need to use them, like, yeah, you're yeah, can't me enough, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Um, I don't know. I'll, t- I'll try and sort you out some gloves at the next uh, next time. Sort going, He's made promises. Look at that. He's made promises now. On the podcast as well. Right, <laughs> Nathan Carty, who was your favourite goalkeeper to watch while growing up? Good question. Um, when I was really young, I just loved like, watching Schmeichel. I thought he was wicked. Um, and then, probably a little bit more recently, 
obviously De Gea I've really enjoyed watching I think he makes unbelievable saves and does it in a way different to everyone else I think so yeah De Gea yeah, too. He's not a big keeper two more questions last one from Twitter best in the world for like four years so it's all good <laughs> <laughs> From Rob, uh, who's suffered two major injuries being in goal, he said, how do you and the other keepers mitigate the risk of injury? Mitigate, good mm. Another great word. Yeah. Um, I don't know, uh, to be honest with you. I don't even no. think about it. No, know. That you do all your, your injury prevention stuff that you get off the physios and your, your prehab work, and then I guess to a certain extent it's in the lap of the gods and it really injuries are a part and parcel of the game, but you just hope you get lucky, really. Right, last one. This is from Daniel Page on Facebook. And I know you've been watching the Twitter questions come in, but you haven't seen Facebook. I haven't. So this is catching you well off guard. And he says, sometimes I cry when I, when I think about how beautiful Celine Dion is. Do you like yoghurt? I mean, it's very, very left field. I mean, <coughs> I do like yoghurt. I think, was that the actual that, that's question? That's the question. Do you like yoghurt? I, I do like yoghurt, yeah. Is just I, I, I'm not sure with why yogurt. we're talking about Celine Dion. <laughs> uh, Peach. Great. Peach in the Muller's in the in the it's got canteen. A bit of strawberry, isn't it? <coughs> no. Strawberry, no. apricot, or peach. Yeah, mm-hmm. that sort of bit of cherry. Mm, that, not that sure about a cherry. <coughs> apricot, peach, very yeah. Good. Black cherry yogurt. Great shout. Great shout. Uh, and on that note, that's we done. Yeah, that's the big Truman. question. Cheers, Truman, guys. Genuinely, all jokes aside, I wish you the very best of luck. Thank everything. you very much, Dale. I appreciate yeah. it. The Blues Talk Podcast with Dale Moon and Callum Denning. Conor Truman, ladies and gents, you'd expect him, of course, to be back in tomorrow against Reading. Yeah, I think so. Like we, like we mentioned, he's done enough, hasn't he, in the the three games that he's played so far. He hasn't really put a foot wrong. So um, you'd imagine he'll be he'll be in. He's got the faith of the manager at the minute, and yeah, good to hear from him as well. And like we say, he has had to be patient. Uh, he's gone out on loan a couple of times and um, had to build himself a career. But he's still very young in terms of a goalkeeper, and a lot of people point to the fact that he's not a teenager anymore. But from you know the longevity of a goalkeeping career, he can play to mid thirties up to creeping up towards your forties well, yeah, if you 40s. have a good run. Yeah, if you have a good run. So still plenty of um, a fuel in the tank for Conor Truman. But yeah, great to see him out there playing first team football. Reading away. Been as a fan. Reading. Yeah, I mean we've got some history there, haven't we? The Kevin Phillips goal. Yeah getting promoted there. Uh, they just not. They just seem to be like a neutral. I don't feel in any particular way about Reading. Um, and that might be the problem. They don't invoke any emotion about mm. from me. So, I mean, it's a decent little stadium. It's, in, it's not a bad place to get to, but it doesn't particularly stoke any feeling for a me. A lot more riding on it this season than when we went there, of course, last game of last season, where I think the um, the highlight was a guard of honour for John O'Shea. <laughs> they were also, the, wasn't it Portugal Day? For it was, yeah, they, Portugal Day. Um, who they've now sacked. Yeah, he's not there. <laughs> is, is it Portugal Day this weekend? <laughs> <laughs> it was Portugal Day. They all had flags. It was a little bit embarrassing, but um, yeah, nothing on the gate. It was a dead rubber, weren't it? I hated Absolutely. that, actually. As good as it was to have you know, the final day done and dusted. You just want all something drama. riding on it, don't yeah. you? Um, so yeah, we go there now, looking for a big three points, and uh, you know it's 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 one where we've come off the back of five games without mm-hmm. a win, but then it's three draws on the bounce. So it depends how you view it through what lens. But a win uh, on the road w- is something that we need. I know we won that first one at Brentford, um, <coughs> won at Charlton, but there are only two wins on the road so far. The rest mm-hmm. have been have been quite close, but we've been on the wrong side of scoreline. So. Want us to go there, be difficult to beat again, go back to a Huddersfield, Sheffield Wednesday mentality, but can we do enough in that final third to nick a game? If we do get the first goal, can we go and get a second? Um, and I think that'll decide the game. Three Blues connections at Reading I want to talk about. Let's start first with centre-back, former Blues captain Michael Morrison, a reunion. Fantastic servant for the club, wasn't he? He did exactly what he says on the tin, came to us when he was vice-captain at Charlton, and I thought at the time it's a fantastic signing for whatever reason. We managed to get him and prize him to Gary Rabbit's first signing. Yeah, um, and what he you know evolved into our captain and and led the dressing room particularly well. A, a great guy off the pitch as well. Done loads for the club, managed the dressing room, done everything for the players. Was the liaison between management and staff. Um, and in terms of his performances, I'm not going to say he was Franz Beckenbauer in terms of carrying the ball into the opposition's half and start playing. Um, but he was a head kick squeeze centre half in the championship and that's where he, you know his level was uh, and a really good servant over the number of years he was here so um, yeah really top guy but I hope he has an awful day on Saturday we know all about his goal scoring prowess of course I believe he was our third highest goal scorer <laughs> last season so how we are uh, combating that <coughs> this yeah. time around yeah, it was all set pieces weren't it it was he was bundled home or it was directly you know yeah. won the first header 
Um, but he is a threat. I mean, yeah, you don't score that many goals um, from set pieces if you don't know what you're doing and he attacks the ball aggressively. I think that's the key. You, you know, we'll know all about Michael Morrison from, from defensive corners. Mm -hmm. So we just got to make sure we don't let him get a run on us. Um, but we've got good enough in the air ourselves. Dukey will come back to, to guard that near post area. Harley Dean will be back there. You'd imagine Jake Clark sorter as well, given Mark Roberts' injury, of course. Um, mm -hmm. So expecting him to be out for a number of weeks. Um, so, yeah, he's a threat in the opposition box and one we have to be careful of. I'm going a bit rogue with this one. I haven't asked you about this beforehand, so feel free to Ooh, okay. uh, interject here. Go on, then. Manager Mark Bowen, former assistant manager here, of course, under Steve Bruce. Yeah, yeah, he was. It was part, part of the club at a really good time as well, wasn't he? And you think of the, the success that they had. And I, I know that Steve Bruce talks really highly of, of Mark Bowen. And I've listened to a few podcasts of players who have played under mm -hmm. him as well. Say a fantastic hands-on coach. And when Bruce was here, he was the guy that put a lot of the sessions on. Robbie Savage loves him, of course. Yeah, yeah the Welsh connection. Um, put on a lot of... Um, a lot of the actual practical sessions, the hands-on stuff. So, yeah, I'm sure he'll be tactically very astute. He'll get them set up well and they come into the game with a, a bit of form as well, don't they? So, dis disappointingly, our friend old Puskas has uh, bagged himself a, a hat-trick. Wow, that's my third and final connection. A man, of course, who was heavily linked with Blues in the summer. So, it's not a direct connection, but George Puskas up mm. front, a man whose name, as I said, we heard a lot of. It was in like it's a five-minute hat trick, I and mean, with ten minutes to go, turns the game on its on its head. We're good. Yeah, as you say, I mean, however, we don't know whether there was official interest, and that's a genuine mm -hmm. comment. We, I am not privy to ever knowing how close or not he was to joining the club. But if you go off all the internet chat, all the rumor mills, everyone on Twitter, I mean, had him it, signing we, for us. it was us. It was us or Reading. Um, so. He chose Reading, um, and I know he scored a fantastic goal early on, didn't he? But then yeah, went quiet. Year, yeah. yeah, then went quiet for a, for a good few weeks or months. But now it's a little bit of form as as we're going to go and take a trip to the Majeski. So um, yeah, I mean, I mean, you don't know what you're going to get with him. He's new to the new to the league, isn't mm -hmm. he? He's been a bit hit and miss, but clearly there's a player there who knows where the back of the net is on his day. So again, along with Michael Morrison, we're going to have to watch old George Puskas. Right after Reading, QPR at home. It was a uh, as I remember, a thrilling nil-nil last season. So, um, <laughs> But then, at Loftus Road, oh, of course, 4-3 last-minute penalty <laughs> saves. So both ends of the spectrum. Yeah, you don't know, again, you don't know what we're going to get. They're not a team in, in particularly great form, QPR. I don't think they've won in seven, six or seven. Um, I'm just having a look to see who they've got the weekend. They're at home to Preston this weekend, which will be a tr tough game. Preston Absolutely, and, yeah. Preston very, very good side. Preston are decent. So, um, again, at St Andrews against the side who struggle. I mean, this has been our banana skin for years, hasn't it? We don't do particularly well over the years mm -hmm. against sides we expect to. Um, no wall. Yeah, but uh, again, I mean, a, a team that you'd like to think Blues will go out to win all three points. And we do do that. And I think that that may well be a contributing factor to why we've lost so many games on the road this year. It's not because we've played particularly badly, but we're not settling for points with the exception of the past few weeks. We haven't been settling for points. We've tried to go out and win the game no matter where we go to, be mm -hmm. it Derby County or Charlton, where we did go and get a win before anyone else had. So it may well be we're, we're all or nothing on the road. Um, at St Andrews, I fancy us um, against QPR. I think that's a, that's a game that, that Pep will get the lads ready for. We've got enough quality. Mm -hmm. They're not in great form going into it so one that you'd hear marked down as a home win it's a tricky one of course QPR in a similar situation to us Mark Warburton's first full season looking to implement a new star move away from what Steve McLaren had in playing it strikes me that their form much like our art much like our own rather doesn't necessarily reflect the way they've been playing at times yeah if there might be a team in transition there's still plenty of quality in there you look absolutely at, I mean, ever actually Nar easy yeah Narky Wells Jordan Hugo these are players who know where the back of the net is I mean Wells has scored eight for the season so too has mm -hmm. As uh, as Hugh Gill and and then Easy's got seven himself, so it, you know they know where the back of the net is. They're no mugs by any by any means, but um, you like to think, like I say, at home um, we need the three points. You back us against anyone, and a team who's not particularly uh, in the habit of winning games going into it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm confident Blues can get the three points out of that one. And then, small master of a local derby against the league leaders on Saturday. Yes, yeah, West Brom. Been very impressed by them. You can't not be um, plenty of quality, gr uh, real charismatic manager, haven't Absolutely, you? Absolutely, yeah, Slevin, Slevin Bilic. Slevin Bilic. So, um, <coughs> yeah, a, a really tough one. But early kickoff. <coughs> it's on TV, I presume it's it on is, TV. It is, yeah. So, um, that'll be a good one. In front of the Sky cameras, approaching Christmas. League leaders are in town. It's a local derby. The atmosphere will be very good. Hopefully we can get a really good game. And they're the games, actually, that we play well in, you know, against the league leaders at home. 
tend to bring the best out of these blue sides. And I hope that's the case as well. We could see a really good footballing team. Um, they've got some some really, really good players. Jermaine Sawyers has got you know loads of accolades in recent weeks. He's been one of, if not the best midfielder in the in the division, known really well from our Walsall days. Mm-hmm. Um, so plenty of quality. I mean, Pereira has been an unbelievable signing. Revelation, isn't Charlie it? Charlie Austin's now starting to score Still goals. got quality like Kieran Gibbs from the Premier League days. Charlie Austin as well. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Um, they've got plenty of, pl- enough, more than enough there to really challenge at the top. They've started particularly well. So that's one I really am looking forward to. I think the supporters will look forward to that one as well. Two very good games against West Brom last season. A point at St Andrews, and then the narrowest of defeats at the Hawthorns. Gary Gardner, I remember, scoring in front yeah, of the Bromley Road end. Yeah, he went running to the, the dugouts, didn't yeah. he? We got Big Dealy as well with us uh, that the day. The big man. Yeah, he loved the goal against West Bromwich Albion. He's telling himself, I don't think he scored as much against any other side. Um, he, he just seemed to bring the best out of uh, out of Big Dealy, so he's particularly looking forward get to that one as well. Get him on a short-term contract, do you reckon? Who, Big Deals? Big Deals. <laughs> yeah, get him in. I don't think his knees are up to it anymore. <laughs> um but yeah, that's yeah. Really looking forward to that one. It's one one that um, one that should be a really good atmosphere, a really good game, and I'm looking forward to it. Well, one thing I've been looking forward to all day is this: our latest edition of the quick fire questions. I still maintain I don't have any answers, but one person who did is joining us right now. The Blues Talk Podcast. Okay, we're with none other than 16-year-old Jude Bellingham, as he's become known, because we have to mention your age whenever you do anything, Jude. So, uh, right, quick fire questions. Uh, right, these are just very light-hearted ones, but there's been some very interesting answers from players, so you'll be absolutely fine. What music do you listen to before a game? Uh, whatever's on in the change room. Oh, that's such a cop-out answer. What would you, if you were in charge of that radio or whatever, what are you playing? Um... I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Snapchat stories or Instagram stories? Snapchat stories. Favourite restaurant to eat at? Nando's. Uh, what's your karaoke song or initiation song? Uh, I don't hate Jude. Ah, oh, cliche, I like it. Favourite movie? Inception, I liked. Mm. Which country produces the best food? So do you like Italian, do you like Mexican, do you like Chinese, Indian? Uh, Italian. Oh. Ooh, okay. Pizza pasta sort of guy. Uh, have you got a middle name? Victor William. Solid middle name. It's a strong middle name. Couple of middle names. Ideal holiday destination? Uh, Caribbean somewhere. Favourite TV series? Mm, Peaky Blinders. The best goal you've seen on the pitch, it can't be one of your own. And it can be at any level, playing for any team. Grassroots, England, Blues. You have to have been on the pitch at the time, oh. but you can't be your goal. I know it's, it's a tough one for many players, but one you've just thought that is a goal. I've not really been on the pitch. and anyone scored any, like, bangers? We'll come back to that one. Y- yeah, yeah. Right, have a think. We'll come back to that one. Uh, do you have any posters on your bedroom wall? Keep it clean. Oh, yeah, no posters. Clean walls. Have you met your sporting hero and who is it? No, nah, it's uh, like I have a few. You know, like Lionel Messi, Conor McGregor, LeBron James. So I've not met any of them. Uh, what instruction do you give to the barbers when they ask how you want your hair? Um, just the temple fade bit and then nothing off the top. <laughs> Favourite cheat meal, so when you have a dirty meal and it's off season and you're allowed to eat what you want for a couple of weeks, what do you have? Fat pizza. <laughs> what did you go dressed as to your last fancy dress party? Never been wrong. Don't party. Just don't lie. What is your last <laughs> fancy dress? <laughs> I don't say to God, no party. Mm. NBA, NFL, Major League Baseball, like American sports, do you follow any of them or do you not really care? No, nah, I don't really care. I just like LeBron James. So. Uh, what are the names of any WhatsApp groups you're part of that you can tell us? Because there's been some very suspect names. Other than the Blues one. No, nah, no good names to be fair. <laughs> nah. Game of Thrones or Power? Don't watch either. Can you play a musical instrument? No. Uh, can you speak another language? No. <laughs> Which Hollywood actor would you choose to play yourself in a Hollywood movie? Uh, Denzel Washington. Denzel. Uh, if the whole squad was in a Royal Rumble, who would be left in the ring at the end? Um, Who's throwing the rest yeah, of the Yeah, that's what out? I'm thinking here. Um... Fancy digger, probably. Popular yeah. answer. Uh, best pair of trainers or boots you've ever owned? Okay. 
the Adizeros. Remember them? I do remember yeah, them. I had like these blue and red ones. So Strong. nice. Yeah, F50 Adizero, yeah. Uh, favorite flavor ice cream? Chocolate. Aftershave of choice, if you've got one, or are you a bit of a mix? Bit of a mix, mate. <laughs> if, uh, what are the names of any of the pets that you and your family have owned? Uh, Suki. What was it? A cat. Suki. Different. Um, it says here, what type of student were you at school? So what type of student are you, dude? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, cheeky, but get on with my work. Good. Good answer. Uh, what's on your bucket list? What do you want to do? What do you want to, you know, before you die? Uh, like, what's that when they jump out of a plane? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Skydiving. skydiving, yeah. Um, what's the worst item of clothing you've worn when you look back at when you were younger and you think, Mom, Dad, why did you put me in that? Um, probably no. a Mingin waistcoat. I've seen the, I've seen a picture the other day. I was thinking, oh my God, I can't believe all that. <laughs> uh, yeah, waistcoat doesn't sound great. Um, are you addicted to anything? Probably my phone, to be fair. Mm, a lot of people are. Yeah. Um, favourite city you've been to or favourite city other than Birmingham, like other than your hometown? Um, Paris was nice, yeah. Nice. Okay, big question. Best way to eat chicken? So is it thigh, leg, breast, and how is it marinated? How is it flavoured? I get thighs because I don't like chicken on the bone because okay. it's just too messy, in it? Okay. So, yeah, and I like like medium spice, a bit of peri tamer sauce and that. Sweet. Uh, have you got any memorabilia from players that you've played against or you've collected any sporting uh, shirts or boots or any of that sort of thing? Yeah, I, I remember I was... of Two that stand out. I remember when I was younger, Damari Gray gave me a pair of his boots and then recently from this season, I swapped shirts with Jan Danda mm. after the game against Swansea. So, yeah, that's the two that stand out. Nice. Finally, have you ever read a book cover to cover that you've chosen to read at home or not? Books or anything? No, I don't read. Drew Bellingham, thank you very much. The Blues Talk Podcast with Dale Moon and Callum Denning. Another fascinating instalment of quick fire questions. Right, Dale, very quickly, Blues women against Spurs in the week. Yeah, at Sully or Moors, one apiece. Um, yeah, we went down there and it was a really bizarre game because for 10 minutes, Blues were on the back foot. Spurs could have been out of sight and a number of chances uh, in the opening exchanges. Then it settled down a little bit. Blues got themselves into the game. Uh, Abby Grant grabbing the goal, really well worked goal as well. Lucy what a Stan, ball from yeah. Lucy Stan. Yeah, she's she's hoisted one up and she she spotted it actually. She had enough time in that midfield area, got it out of her feet, hoisted one on the diag. The goalkeepers just had a rush of blood, came sprinting out, hasn't made up the ground. Abby Grant bravely just flicks what it a on, header. yeah, flicks it on and uh, finds the back of the net. So get yourselves in front, having been actually second best for 20, 30 minutes of the game. Um, but then Spurs get the equaliser, and I think that's the big frustration of the night is the manner in which they conceded a, a ball into the box. It's just bundled home at the far post. It was a, a cross from wide towards the back post. Sorry, it's nodded down. Hannah Hampton does get a hand to it, but falls into the back of the net. One each. Then it becomes a bit basketball match. You, you attack, we attack. Um, neither could find that little bit of quality that decided the game. So a point on the night. But a fantastic response, of course, to that home defeat to Chelsea, which is what we wanted to see. Yeah, and actually, I was talking to Colin Tatum, who was at the Chelsea game. He said for, for the first half, um, Blues were better against Chelsea than they were against Spurs. You would find themselves in front. Um, so it just goes to show that, you know, you f- if you take your chances in the game, um, and I, I actually was involved in the 23s match this week, that it was exactly the same case. Derby. Uh, it was just a bizarre, I mean, it's 5-1 uh, defeat for, for Steve Spooner's side. And it was the most bizarre 90 minutes I've ever seen in football. Spoon said it best, didn't he, in the uh, Blues TV post-match interview. Could have had seven. Yeah, they had five. We could have had seven. And that's not an exaggeration. You know, often we get accused of bias working for the club. Genuinely, I've sat there watching that game thinking, how are we 5-0 down? 5-1 down, sorry. Um, yeah, a few things didn't go Blues' way on the night. But it just goes to show, take your chances and, and it can mask over a, a, a poor performance. And um, yeah, I, I think Blues ladies will be frustrated not to win the game. And the under-23s will come away scratching their head as to how they've got beaten so heavily. One thing that we were nearly going to completely skip right past and not mention, of course, made the night you were at Loughborough for that derby game, the FA Cup draw. Blackburn at home. Yeah, Blackburn at home. So I think we were all hoping for a big away day to us. You know what? I was convinced we were getting Arsenal when it was down to that last few teams. Yeah, we always seem to be towards the end of these draws. Um, So, yeah, Blackburn at home. I mean... 
you just hope that being a championship side, we know all about them. Um, Playing them a week just, and a half before. It don't matter how it comes, just get the win and make sure you're in the hat for the next round and then you can worry about getting one of the big guns. But yeah, early January, isn't it? The first weekend of January. It Black, is. Blackburn at home. Play Blackburn. Wrap up. January the 4th at St Andrews. January right, last, last thing then, before we wrap up and move on to other business. Um, Blues TV coverage this week. We were meant to have a pay-per-view against QPR. Uh, on the, it's on Sky. The big boys have killed us, haven't they? they uh, we can't broadcast it, so that's disappointing. Interesting uh, developments with Amazon Prime this oh, week. Unreal. We like can spend an hour talking yeah, about that. In very interesting f- uh, newcomers into the market. But yeah, so we can't really plug anything, Cal. We can't sell our, sell our listeners anything this Listen, time. Listen, if you're in the UK and you want an audio subscription... Who's going to be joining you against uh, QPR? So Kevin Broadhurst will be in the building for the QPR game. Um, in the warmth. Not happy that we got Darren Percy in, was he? Kicked no. his, bat his dummy out of the pram, but he's back. Don't worry, Kev. We still uh, <laughs> still got you. I think we both had a, a tirade <laughs> each for that. <laughs> Kev's back with us for QPR and Big Dealy for West Bromwich Albion. The big man himself. Of course, audio yeah. subscription, audio coverage rather, available to UK subscribers and video coverage available to those in selected markets. Big dealy. It's Big a fantastic deals. impression. I mean, he'll, he'll disagree. Big deals. But listen, we'll put it to him. We'll get him back on. Anyway, that's about all the time we've got here on the Blue Sort Podcast this week. We'll be back, hopefully not in a month's time. It'll be Christmas. I, I know. Well, it'll be five days before Christmas. So I want you to turn up, Christmas jumper, <sighs> paper crown. Yeah. I know I'm asking a lot, but we can make it happen. Absolutely. Anyway. We'll speak to you then. For the meantime, I've been Calm Denny. And I've been Dale Moon. This has been the Blues Talk Podcast. The Blues Talk Podcast with Dale Moon and Callum Denning.